you know something? More than half the people who live on this little planet now live in cities. Human beings have become an urban species, and the cities we live in are growing by over a million people every week. Things will never be the same again. Welcome to Lagos, the largest city in Nigeria and the fastest growing of all the mega cities of 10 million people and more, which are popping up all over the world. Each week, another 10,000 people pour into the slums which make up three quarters of Lagos. And they're already full to bursting. Every square inch is being used by someone. And space is in such demand that the city is sprawling in every direction it can, even into the lagoon which surrounds it. When we first come here, all this place is water, surrounded with water. But despite this chaotic approach to urban planning, life in the ghettos on the water isn't all about poverty, pollution, and cholera, you know. These people can show you that a little bit of chaos is not always a bad thing. This boat is sinking. It's sinking down. They're trying to, to bail it off. <laughs> They're resourceful, determined, and unbelievably resilient. This heart is my own identity to let people recognize the work that I'm doing. And they're successfully adapting to the realities of modern city life in ways which you, in the so-called developed world, couldn't even imagine. If you want to know how the city has grown, then these are the people to ask. The inhabitants of Lagos's version of Venice, a slum built on water called Makoko. Two hundred years ago, this was just a small fishing village on the edge of Lagos Lagoon. But as more and more people flooded into the expanding city, looking for somewhere to settle, they began to build houses on stilts. Now Makoko extends half a mile out into the water and is home to over a hundred thousand people. And counting. I'm so happy today for more happiness, my child deliver new baby. Girl, I'm so happy to have Now we have a look. <laughs> Take this guy, Chube. He first came here some 40 years ago when he was in his 20s and he's seen the place transformed. Now, age 65, he's the proud father of 18 children and, as of today, five grandchildren most of whom still live with him in the oldest part of Makoko. Hallelujah! 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 <laughs> <laughs> So I want to clear and to go down. We are not to miss and can't see why you're here. Like most of the people who first settled in Makoko, Chube is a fisherman. But with three daughters at university, ten children at various schools, and more and more food to put on the table every day, he's become an expert at making money from the most unlikely of places. I'm making the fish one. If we do the Fish pond, you will get, if you use almost 100,000, it may be at the end of the day, you can get 200,000. So 100,000 will be your profit. 
Stretch, 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 man. You see, this is the fish we we train for the fish pond. Yeah. Okay, drop it. By next year, we enjoy some, so we can make a pepper soup and have a taste how the fish look like. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I, I want to go to the toilet. There's no order. If you sit here, the water will wash it away. So you cannot get order. Everything is clean. That's why we love it. Now, you might not want to go for a swim around here, but everything else in Makoko takes place on the water. People commute to work. Goods are brought to market. And every day, the children are rowed to school. And it's water that accounts for the huge piles of rubbish lying by people's houses. Because this is no ordinary litter. It's land reclamation, Makoko style. You see all this rubbish? We put all this rubbish. After six months, when it is settled down again, we put another rubbish. To avoid the smelling, we go to uh, Ibutemeta and collect the sundocks. So we put this uh, sundocks on top. When it's strong, we started to put sand on top, so it will be straight. <laughs> when we first come here, all this place is water, surrounding with water. So from up over there, you can get in, all this water. We just make this type of bridge this type of bridge so when we looked at uh, the bridge always the plank damage we feel that if we started to adopt another system that with all this rubbish we can use to fill all this place so we develop here by ourselves makoko must be one of the only places on earth where people actually pay to have rubbish dumped on their doorsteps the standard fee for a load of rubbish, diverted from the dump, is 30 pence. 